U.S. cannot currently produce its own nuclear fuel in any quantity beyond R&D quantities. When you're talking about a poppy seed, mm -hmm. I mean, that's like nothing. How much energy does that produce? Cold War era. We were the world leader in enrichment. We had these plants. Are you serious? And so there's five steps in making fuel. One little one inch pellet is equivalent to a ton of coal or a hundred barrels of oil. The U.S. currently does not have a significant amount of uranium enrichment for fuel production. So the U.S. US cannot currently produce its own nuclear fuel in any quantity beyond R&D quantities. Are you serious? We're, so yeah. where do we get it from? So currently we, uh, we get all of our, so there's five steps in making fuel. You have to mine it out of the ground. You then turn it into a gas for enrichment. You then enrich it, which is just, it's essentially a refining process. So enrichment is separating the element of uranium into it's two to, a couple of different types based on its isotope, which is how many neutrons it has. So it's really a refining separation process. So a lot of people here in Richmond, they think, okay, this sounds dangerous or sounds like there's going to be a lot of radiation or there's going to be some sort of dangerous chemical reactions. It's actually just separation. So we don't even have any, you know, in an enrichment plant, there's no nuclear reactions happening. You're not making anything go critical is what they call it when there's a chain reaction, and there's no chemical reactions. You are doing phase change, you're taking some material from a solid to a gas, but you're just separating it. So that's the middle step that the U.S. doesn't currently do. We'll talk more about that. And then you bring it back down into a solid, which is called deconversion, and then you form it into a pellet or a particle, a pebble, whatever form the reactor needs, that's called fuel fabrication. So these five steps, the U.S. has mining. We have mining in Texas, uh, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado. So there's mining. Canada has mining a lot. You know, a lot of mining for uranium, and Australia has great deposits as well. So U.S. and its allies have plenty of uranium. On conversion, we have one conversion facility in the U.S. that's operating in Illinois, and then Canada has one too. Um, that's, again, going from solid to gas. But enrichment, the U.S. has no commercially operating capability. So we get all of our enrichment from foreign companies, which are state-backed entities. Most of it's overseas. So that's uh, we, get, we get enriched uranium product from Russia, from France, and from a European consortium of a couple countries that produce. And then that consortium at the request of U.S. utilities, built a facility in the U.S. to produce some of what we need, but it's still less than a third. So two thirds comes from overseas, one third produced by foreign, a foreign company in the U.S. using their technology. And then on the, on the downstream side of making the pellets, good capability in the U.S. for doing that right now. Some of the more advanced uh, forms of like little pellets that are maybe poppy, poppy seed size called triso, it's got some ceramic coatings around it that... Did you say poppy seed size? Yeah, they're poppy seed size. So um, to get into the details of some of the fuel forms, there was a type of fuel that was developed decades ago and tested for a really long time. Um, so it's it's been proven to be really robust. But you take a tiny piece of uranium and you coat it with ceramic. And that ceramic means that even in the worst case scenario, where your reactor somehow disintegrates these little pellets are self-contained, so they can't even release any radioactive gas. So it's another layer of safety on top. So a bunch of the advanced reactor types are doing that. But if we zoom out, you know, for to really have domestic capability, you need all the steps. And so the step that's missing right now is enrichment. And that's why we're working on enrichment. Why, do, why don't we have enrichment right now? We used to have enrichment. Um, Global map of enrichment right now, Russia's about half. Europe's about 40%. China's roughly 10%, growing really fast. So the 10% was a couple years ago. It's, it's north of that now. And the US, just in terms of how much total enrichment we're doing, it's less than 0.1%. And wow. so you ask, how do we get here? Yeah. Um, these, these things are usually 
it's you know it's usually over constrained there's a bunch of reasons why we got here we didn't think we needed it we thought maybe nuclear isn't growing anymore it's fine we have these reactors up until a couple of years there was an agreement that we needed more reactors and so why build a bunch of new capacity in the US for enriching if we're not going to build a b- bunch more reactors we can just get this stuff from we can get enriched uranium from our allies in Europe and you know other countries as well and if you rewind to the history of this in the 50s the US built a bunch of enrichment this was you know cold war era we were the world leader in enrichment we had these plants spread out throughout the country that use an old technique that was expensive it was required a lot of energy to do it but we were we had the most capacity and we built up a lot of enriched uranium that we stockpiled and those stockpiles we knew they would last a really long time you know decades and decades and so with the fall of the berlin wall we said let's start trading with our former enemies we're allies now we can work together free trade's good for the world and we can get this product elsewhere and so over the next couple of decades um we moved towards free trade and imports and decommissioned those old facilities assuming that that would be a fine thing to rely on with a bunch of different partners but now we're in a position where we need to grow nuclear energy and if you look at how much enrichment the US is going to need right now we produce less than a third of what we need and the the administration a couple of weeks ago said we are going to quadruple our nuclear energy by 2050 so now we went from producing a third of what we need less than a third to less than a 12th and so we need to create a, an, a massive amount of new nuclear reactor builds we have 94 now we got to quadruple that and the fuel production we need to to increase much more than that how much when you're talking about a poppy seed mhm i mean that's like nothing how much energy does that produce so a, a pellet roughly an inch tall of conventional enriched uranium that one pellet which roughly like coke can dimensions just shrunk down to 1 inch tall would contain as much energy as a ton of coal or 100 barrels of oil wow so, and yeah that's that's also if that that pellet is conventional uh nuclear fuel which is about 5% enriched and when you run that through most of the energy is still in there so you you put it in you know the way that nuclear reactors work is you have uranium inside the fissile material is uranium 235 you get uranium 235 in proximity to itself and it starts releasing neutrons which create heat and it forms a chain reaction these chain reactions are controlled in reactors through the control rods that they have through water in the vessel and so it just it's basically a heat generator and <clears throat> you take the heat traditionally you boil water um you either do that directly you know all the rods are sitting in water and so they're making heat the water is heating up you can either keep that really pressurized like a pressure cooker and exchange the heat and run a steam turbine outside or you can actually just let the water boil and use the steam there to power to power turbines directly so that's how reactors work and like a really simple analogy i give is it's almost like a compost heap it's like you know food scraps and yard waste spread out isn't going to do anything uh-huh. but you pile it enough you start getting some heat production and that's essentially what a reactor is doing this is except it's doing it with a much different type of reaction it's a nuclear reaction and it's doing it with uranium and so that's how every reactor works it's just fuel held in some configuration with some element of control over how much heat's produced and some coolant that's around it Wow, so one one little 1-inch pellet is equivalent to a ton of coal or 100 barrels of oil. Yep. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.